Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Um, let's see here. Let me uh, get another comment. Flying Rich gave us a couple of bucks here. Thank you, Flying Rich. He says, compete night shooting gallery any uh, into the BOP. So I'm assuming he says get into the BOP. I'm assuming. So he's asking a BOP yep. question. Um, okay. How did you so, get in there? Yeah. Oh, I it's mean, top secret. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, be a good advocate. Be a good Second Amendment advocate. Uh -huh. Make your voice be heard. Hank, you, you're in. Yes, absolutely. Uh, listen, the thing is, so I always tell people this, um, and we've had we've had Ryan on, we've had Josh on, we've had Roy on. Shout out to all those guys. By the way, the BOP crew, awesome. I, I, I want to have a conversation about that. But those are really great guys. Honestly, I feel like that, those guys are like uh, family, you know, and that's not – there's companies who say that. I think those guys really mean that. Lola and I definitely, uh, we feel that about them. So those guys have been on, and those guys have laid it out pretty much. If you're a gun guy and you're doing cool gun stuff, you know, share your cool gun stuff on social media, and you can at Brownells and put right. hashtag BOP in there or hashtag Bureau of Propaganda, and, you know, just do the cool things and put it in there. And there's folks looking at this at some point. They will recognize what you're up to, and they'll reach out to you Show. and it'll happen. So. Show Brownell some love. That's all you yeah. have to say. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But and, it doesn't have cool to be. A, it doesn't have to be a Brownells things. Those guys are just looking for no. cool stuff going on in the gun world right. in the community, and it doesn't have to be specifically Brownells. You know. So there you go. One of the ways We're... to not get in there is to harass Pete. <laughs> yeah. so I, have, I do have a blacklist. Yeah. The, the squeaky no, wheel will get changed. <laughs> just, no, just... Be a, yeah, be a good, be a yeah. good second amendment supporter. Let yeah. your voice be heard. Be bold yeah. and be out there. Yeah, Pete's in charge of a lot of things, but I don't know. I don't. He's not. He can't no. help you get in there any faster. No. <laughs> so no. I'll just put it to you uh, that way. You know, um, you got, you got, you got somebody gave me fifty dollars. You see that? Oh no, I didn't see it. Hold on, let me see. Where is that? Let's get to that there. Okay, boom. Yeah, let's get that comment up there. Thanks to Jen Champ Jr. for the fifty bucks. We appreciate that. He says, uh, "Pair character riding a firework rocket disappearing away before bursting into the sky." So I guess that's a description of a of a uh, of a sticker. So basically, Jen Champ got the sticker of the pair character. Someone's going to have oh, to go yeah, look yeah. that up and send me a picture because I can't see it on the system oh, that I'm using. you can't see that? Yeah, so he got a sticker. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, that's awesome right out there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to get some other uh, questions well, in Guns here. and Gears in the chat. Guns and Gears in the chat. Oh, shout out to Guns and Gear. Let's see what's Guns and Gear yep. saying. Let me see. Where is he? Here we go. Oh, Mr. Guns and Gear channel says BOP member checking in. And if you want to know how Guns awesome. and Gear got in there, it's because he has a beautiful bald head. <laughs> okay. And a magnificent beard. <laughs> and does lots of cool gun stuff. Yeah, so you're competing. Cool with, yeah, you're competing with Guns and Gear. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so shout out, shout out to Guns great, and Gear. Go. Huh? You know, Hank, that what you're exemplifying is why. The propaganda, Bureau of Propaganda is awesome. Yeah. It's a good community. I mean, I see you guys We uh, at, at the shows. You're helping each other out. When we go on our big junkets or, or boondoggles with the social crowd, mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun, guys. Mm -hmm. If you can ever hook up with them at any event or anything that they're doing or any shoot that they're at, do it. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a big family. It's, it's, it's a great yeah. industry to be in. Yeah, absolutely. These guys okay. are always traveling around the country, too, so... What was what were you going to say? All right. Walt? All right. Who who was the mastermind of the BOP? Who who said we need to? And in, <laughs> in, in reality, the BOP is to reach out to a younger audience. Yeah. True. I, I know this a little bit. I know Roy's wife actually designed the flag. She did. Yes. Yes, she did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That was cigars and scotch. But it, it does reach sure. out to a different a different <laughs> audience. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. It does. Obviously, you um, know, there's a lot of and the. the I mean, in my opinion, the uh, you know the traditional gunsmith is sitting at his little bench and he's surrounded by his tools and 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 he's like he's focused like a, like he's got his you know, yeah. things on, 
And, and sometimes a lot of these guys think all that stuff is silly. When you laugh and you have fun, but guns, you're you're silly. You know, you're you're not. It's nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. But well, that limit that kind of, to me that kind of limits the audience too to that to that 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 mindset. You know, where you mm-hmm. can't have fun and, and and do that stuff too. You know, or or be a little goofy or something like that. You know. So yeah. I think that yeah. Makes sense. Our industry, uh, geez, 15 years ago, it suffered from the I'm in the club and I'm closing the door and you better know about guns a lot before I even crack the door. So you almost had to be born into the industry mm-hmm. about 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. It, was a, yeah, it, was, well, it was a little bit of that from, from some of the old school guys, not all of them, not all of them. Some sure, of those, yeah. yeah there was, but there was a little yeah. bit of that. There was a little bit. Yeah. A demographic. Let me get this. So the demographic was a lot of our customers were of that older crowd. They were very good, um, and we we realized that we needed to open the door a lot to bring in uh, uh, this new generation that's coming in, and they were they were coming in with a different experience. There was a generation that didn't uh, take their kids out hunting or to the range. Because they were really, you know, nose to the grindstone, trying to make things work as, as uh, life got more complicated during that, that uh, 70s and 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. So there was a generation of kids that weren't, weren't uh, into the group and were being taught through video games what firearms are all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we, we need to bend that curve a little bit and yeah. do a little bit more of the, uh, yeah, that was, as they moved into their 30s and their 40s, uh, we needed to have something, some place for them to land that felt like it was theirs, mm-hmm. and that was part of what the bureau was about. Uh, going digital is a big part of that. Being able to um, enjoy a broader, quicker. Uh, three gun came about by then too, so it was real quick. It wasn't to stand there in your leather strapped up jacket shooting <laughs> offhand with your hand in your pocket. Those types of things. Mm-hmm. So the games changed, the environment changed, and how you present yourself to the market and how you create a community also changed with this new technology we're even on yeah. today. So we're just right. adapting. There were some old guys saying all you needed is a shotgun. You went into a, <laughs> you went into a gun store. This happened to Lola and myself. Uh, we went into a gun uh, store and the dudes were like, here, little lady, all you need is a shotgun. When you make this sound, chick, it scares everyone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it, there was that kind of thing, and I and it and I think that kind of thing turns um, a lot of people off, right? Right. We uh, so the real fat numbers are in big numbers. 110 million gun owners in America, whether they raise their hands or not. Okay. Between 108, 110. Okay. 75 million are um, three guns, up to three guns. Mm-hmm. So one to three guns. Hmm. Um, 30 million are three to five. And uh, five and above, and you can slice it even deeper, five and above um, get you into about five million. Well, yeah, uh, about five million is what we can put our, our best guess on that mm-hmm. in, in America. So, yeah, I've, yeah, I've so always guessed about that number. I've always guessed like, yeah, yeah it's probably around five million or mm-hmm. so. Yeah, five to six. of the hardcore, like we've got multiple guns uh, kinds of dudes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few of us that have more than 70 guns, but yeah, no, we would know no one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know how many. I really don't know the exact number. I, yeah, yes, yeah, that's how you. That's the real about. elite dudes. I don't know. <laughs> if you have I to count, you. you're not a gun guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it, it's not. It's not like a bragging thing. I don't know. No, brag I, about no I'm not all. saying that. But, yeah, but but uh, you know, I just said I. It's not something I worry too much about, you know. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Got it. yeah. Right. Absolutely. So uh, let me let me do something here. Christian Grest, we're talking about BOP. He gave us twenty five bucks. He says getting into the BOP has really been one of the coolest things I've been a part of in the firearms world. Hats off to Brownells. Ah, uh, thank you. Thanks for that. And you know it, it is. So how did these guys like? How I think you were saying they made you drunk. They got you drunk and they convinced you. <laughs> this was. <laughs> This was so, a thing. How, how does they that... up a flag and said, "Look, what we've been doing for a while." So it's Ryan and Josh and that team and Red Roy. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of fun together, uh, and those guys are 
uh, very creative. And you've, you've probably had them on. They're probably great dynamic mm -hmm. energy when they're on individually or together. Yeah. Oh, and they just came up with it. And it's it's great. It's it's be part of the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we approach social a lot different than, than uh, traditional marketing companies would, which means uh, we took a couple of years to build the brand. And then we turn it over to you guys, the customers. We are a reflection of what you tell us, not what we, not what we hammer down on you. Mm -hmm. So, Bureau of Propaganda is your your voice, your your club, your your organization. We just happen to be able to put the, the swag pieces together for you and make it kind of you know collectively cool. Mm -hmm. So, but it's but it's you guys that are really making it. Uh, it's it's awesome experience. So yeah, that's think, what we do with our brand these days. Yes, absolutely. I, and it's not like if people think it's it's uh, something that's trying to push Brownells because it sounds like that, right? Bureau of Propaganda. Those guys really yeah. are trying. I've seen them like trying to recognize folks out there in the gun world that are doing cool things and sharing it. Yeah. Um, and there's there honestly, there's no limit. <laughs> It's not a secret thing or whatever. Like every gun guy can be in there. Just you know, we'll, we'll just those guys just have to travel around a lot or or, or get around to people. But there, it, it's nothing like that. It's really trying to recognize what folks are doing out there. When yeah. there's a lot of companies that, and I could tell you from my point of view, uh, Walter and and you know for that matter, Pete, as a guy doing this YouTube thing as a content creator, a social media person, there's a lot of companies that have zero respect for us. You know, they yeah. have when they when they look at us, they're like, whatever, we could care less about you. Right. Um, that's getting less and less now, because I think they're realizing in this age how important it is. But there's still folks who feel that way, like we don't have that much respect for what you do. It's no big deal. You know, and it's it's cool to have folks out there who recognize that people are doing things. It's mm -hmm. not going to make you like some people might think, oh, this is going to make you somehow blow up. And and all of a sudden, no, I, it's, I don't think it has anything to do with that. It's just here's some cool stuff going on. And these guys are sharing it. Walter, who is a manufacturer and he sells right. stuff. He's in there. There's 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 quite a few folks out there. Um, all walks. I, of I life. didn't even I wasn't even trying. That's the thing. I just. I just we just yeah. make stuff and share the stuff and yeah. show it and boom. Yeah, and boom. what you now do, but you do, yeah, and you do a lot of stuff. I think you embody it in your way, Walter, because you know. Um, so, for example, Walter and I, we do a lot of things together, and he's doing, you know, those wind up being Brownells things, right? Or we're we're shouting out Brownells, and there's probably people going to you, Walter. What are you doing? Why are you shouting out the Brownells guys? Those well, guys yeah, are already but, big. <laughs> well, no, I haven't heard that, but it's like there is some. There is this thought that. Why are you propping up? Are you, are you? You're not getting anything for that. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. It's like yeah. you're not getting anything for that. Why are you talking about those guys? Yeah. Or or any other company? It's like well, because I use their stuff and I like their stuff and yeah. And you were also not helping doing me out. You were also helping me out. Which by the way, the Brownells guys right. recognize that. You know. So when I and, talk and, to and, Josh and, and Ryan, they're like, you know, and 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 Roy, they're like, hey, we see that Walter is helping you out to do stuff, and they want to be able to do something to, that you would recognize, hey, we see you and what you're doing. Right, right. and and they we, help you get new stuff so we can do stuff, that kind of yeah, stuff, you know. Yeah, we should, this well, stuff we should be doing, stuff, yeah. Stuff, 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 yeah. We, we've got a bit of a philosophy that, uh, you, you may have heard the phrase, uh, a, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. Our phrase is, how do you be the tide? How do you lift all boats, including those that would be traditional competitors? So if the industry is doing well, mm -hmm. healthy dialogue, healthy uh, sales, we all do better. Because the worst thing you can do is start to, uh, to have this scarcity mindset uh, mm -hmm. like this, either or. I win and you lose mindset. There's this, this concept of plenty. There is plenty of work. There is plenty of voice. There is plenty of room. And if you share that with your excess to those that are that have a bit of a scarcity, mm -hmm. you try to be the tide. We all, all do better, not just as an industry, but I believe as a society. Right. Yeah, I agree with and, you on and that. You prob and, and Roy, you probably welcome competition, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because the sharp you, you, get to, you get to show how how better you are. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, you know, it, 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 well, listen, it does happen. There are companies that ask me that. They're like, "Why are you doing stuff with these guys all the time?" And I was like, because I like those guys. I actually, I love those guys. You know, when it comes to yeah. Roy and Josh 
and 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 Ryan, these are really cool guys who I'm I'm convinced of that are not just do like I there's people in the industry I only hear from <laughs> if it's Shot Show or NRA <laughs> or something like when that. They want something. Oh yeah, oh they're putting <laughs> out something. These are these are not those guys. I think that like they genuinely mean it. They're not the same person. Like Ryan and Josh and Roy are all different people, and they're all awesome. Somehow they figure out how to. I can't. You need to give those guys raises, Pete. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give those guys. Give, give those guys more money. <laughs> um, but how? So how does this work inside of Brownells? If you could tell us, I don't know whether you can or not, because. As a marketing guy, that's what your degree is in. And I think I saw you say you were the first marketing guy for Brownells. Is that right? Yeah, my yeah, my dad was uh, my my grandfather was a, basically a mechanic and a writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was um, um, lawyer slash doctor. Um, didn't like that when he came into writing himself, a journalist. That mm -hmm. uh, was the first. Um, degree right and school uh, mm -hmm. marketer mm -hmm. so how does the marketing work right is that the kind of the question well, yeah so it? where i was going with it is how does it work because i think you have a traditional marketing uh wing or department or whatever we want to call it at brownells but bop and what what these what those guys are doing is kind of like i always i don't know I don't know whether what you think about this, but I always call it the guerrilla marketing team. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So right. how did that? Well, you know, how does that work and function within? So social, the, the social front, the um, we do have a traditional marketing function, which is send out a catalog, send out emails, use the the four P's of marketing, pricing and promotion, and your product and your placement, all that stuff. It's traditional theory. But uh, we kind of put that as the, um, as we started to develop our digital strategies, websites, um, and social integration into what we do, we, the, the social part is almost eclipsing the traditional marketing as far as brand reinforcement, brand identity, uh, if, you, if you're in brand awareness. Mm -hmm. You guys are talking about it quite a bit. And we go from a, a, a center, this idea of we need to be in control of everything to letting go of control and let the social zeitgeist define who we are mm -hmm. and give us feedback. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the, uh, that's why we bought AR-15 was to, to help grow that voice and it gives us incredible feedback. Not just us, but everybody who, who believes that that their brand is a reflection of what their customers are saying. Um, mm -hmm. When they when we get partners like that, the brand just like, this grows because it's your brand now as well. So mm -hmm. we're letting go of it, right? And you get to define it. And if we do a good job, we like the outcome. If we yeah. don't do a good job, you'll let us know. Mm -hmm. So this team of inside marketers are uh, really engaged in building better relationships mm -hmm. and. We think through relationships, since this is a passion industry, you sell person to person, uh, you're engaging a passion. Mm -hmm. We want to we want to ignite that and encourage that. And that only happens when when you guys can say, I, you know, I know Pete, I know Josh, I know Ryan, I know Chad, our CEO, mm -hmm. I know John, or because we're out there building relationships. Mm -hmm. And with that comes trust. And we are we try to be a reflection of what we believe in, and we hope that resonates well. And if not, well, I can tell you we get we get uh, good feedback. It's not all it's not all what you would consider rosy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it helps us sharpen the saw a bit. Yeah, and become better. Yeah, I think it uh, I think it helps to not be afraid of of like you know or micromanage every little thing. Were you going to say something, Walt? No, I'm just listening. I'm I'm absorbing. Yes. <laughs> Absorbing. I, yeah. Yeah. Let me um, let me get a couple of things in here. So Lola, just on that subject, I believe Lola says uh, that's very unique of Brownells. The interactions with not just gun folks, but folks in other fields uh, with similar love for the 2A, for example, Valentina, uh, Bullet Valentina, yeah. Big Mo, Yeti, you know, who's like a Jeep guy, Big Mo. We've had him on. He's a barbecue barbecue guys so there's lots of different people and this becomes more of a lifestyle like that right you know? right right yeah. right if we kept our market just on hardcore gunsmiths 
we'd be yeah. a much smaller organization. Mm-hmm. So we want, if we can broaden that, our, our reach, we can help feed that gunsmith, our core customer, and we can help feed the, the industry uh, by encouraging people to get out there, go to training, um, make make those firearms as personal as possible, and here's how you do it. And uh, we use people that are in markets that are good supporters. Yeti, every off-road person has a backup firearm somewhere that I know mm-hmm. that's really off-road, that, that Yeti and YOLO live. Yep. Big Mo, great, great, great guy. Yeah, good uh, dude. All anybody who's, yeah. So we try to work with people that have a, a good independent streak in them, that have a, a voice that can be a, a kind of a beacon of truth out there in, in their world, as you guys are, and and help whatever we can do to help your boat float higher. How do we be the tide for you guys or Yeti or the, the ones that are being talked about? So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, DCG. That's how we... Okay, very good. I agree with that. DCG forty four says Roy and Josh. I'm getting I'm getting this one in because it's about my buddies. <laughs> he says Roy and Josh would be good people if they sold encyclopedias. It's who they are, not what they do. I agree with that. They are they are good guys. Um, each hey, uniquely in their own way. Uh huh. Go ahead. So next time you get Roy on, try to throw any question, any question at him. He can answer it, and it'll be pretty darn close to right, if not yeah. absolutely right. Oh, oh yeah, trust play... me. I do this with Roy uh, I, uh, with uh, Ryan. I do it. Are we talking about Roy or Ryan? Roy. Roy, Roy yeah, Roy. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Roy, yeah. Roy is, is like an encyclopedia, yeah. He is a walking encyclopedia. He's a history professor. Uh, and also so, his twin evil brother, Wolf... Was it's Wolf uh, Howitzer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.